Hi. Hello. RNG back again with another episode of Elite Nerd. This time we will talk about non sequent stars. That being white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes. Now, I am sitting at Galileo Orbital again in the Solar System, orbiting the moon. And, uh, yeah. So if we go over here to the galaxy map, you can, and we change this to only show non sequence stars, you can see that there are a lot of white dwarfs surrounding our solar system. All these blue dots are white dwarfs. Now there are no neutron stars close to us. The closest one we'll have to go is about 151, 150 or so light years. We'll get to that later. So the first one we will cover is a white dwarf. White dwarfs are formed when a star one to two solar masses dies. After becoming a red giant, it will uh, shred its outer fa outer uh, layers and uh, swell into a red giant, and then just blow away until uh, all that's left is this dense, solid core of uh, hydrogen, helium. Yeah, it's just, it's no bigger than the Earth. And, uh, so yeah, I will show you what that looks like. As soon as I can find the right star. Where is it? This one. There it is. Okay. Now, I'll also for this uh, for this episode, we will be leaving the solar system, and so we will therefore need to make a hyperspace jump, and you'll get to see what hyperspace looks like. And so far, we've only used uh, super cruise, which is uh, just like an in-system travel that just gets around the solar system faster. It's still faster than light, but it's not like really fast. Hyperspace is like two. Oh, there's a good. There's a good view. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Uh, there. Um, yeah. Hyperspace. You'll go between 2,000 to 5,000 C. Well, Super Cruise is only up to like a thousand or two thousand C, C being the speed of light. One C is the speed of light. And then, uh, so yeah, once we get out of the mass lock, you can't jump while you're mass locked. So, uh, okay, I will see you in the, in, uh, the next system. Alrighty, here we are. This is a white dwarf. It's a very tiny, st oh god, not very tiny. You see, you might have seen that yellow circle appear when I sped up. That is the star's gravity field, and if we were to hit that, we would be thrown back into normal space due to the safety mechanism of our ship's FTL. Anyway, white dwarfs are dense cores of a star left over from after a star has died off, but not gone supernova. These stars aren't heavy enough to go supernova, and instead have expanded, like I said before, and uh, yes, these stars are no different, are no bigger than the, uh, the size of the Earth but still contain the same amount of mass as what they did when they were still main sequence stars such as our sun um, we will all, they will also uh, burn for trillions of years before finally cooling to the point 
where they become what's called a black dwarf, which is just a dense, solid object that puts out no heat, no light, and it can't be detected. It's essentially dead. That's the star's final stage, I guess, of its evolutionary life cycle. Uh, there are different classifications of white dwarfs. There are some that contain hydrogen helium atmospheres. There are some that contain just hydrogen. There are some that, uh, yeah, they, uh, some contain more hydrogen, some contain more helium. It just depends on what the star had w before it died. Okay. Now there's also a mechanic in the game to where you can turn on my fuel scoop. You can fly into those jets coming out of the the uh, tops there, and it will boost your jump range temporarily for a single jump. I'll show you what that looks like. There we go. Took me a minute. Wonder why it wasn't. So now we have a supercharged frame shift drive. Now typically my jump range is about 50 or so, 60 light years. I'm currently up to 85 light years. And then if I was running on empty, it'd be about 94 light years for a single jump. Now We've seen white dwarfs. We will move on to the second stage a star can take, the neutron star. And for that, we will be jumping 176 light years to Jackson's Lighthouse. So if I turn back on the, uh, yeah, I had to turn back on that. All right, so. I will see you guys when we get there. All right, this next uh, this next jump will be our final jump before we enter the uh, the system containing Jackson's Lighthouse. Um, I will leave the full travel jump sequence thing. I don't know what's called in, so you can see the uh, the effect of hyperspace and how bright a neutron star is compared to a regular star. So you'll see that now. See? That bright object there at the beginning is a neutron star. And you can see all the other stars whizzing by. As we come out, there we go. This is a neutron star. A neutron star is formed when a star of 1.4 solar masses, or no less than 1.4 solar masses, but no greater than 3.2 solar masses, goes uh, supernova. At that state, the solar mass is, uh, I forgot to mention this before, the solar mass is the mass of our star which is 1.989 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. And uh, stars that are at least maybe two to three uh, times the mass of our star go supernova. I mean, they're heavy enough, they're large enough that there's enough mass to cause a big enough explosion that gravity compresses them down into a tiny ball of, made entirely of neutrons and uh, it's no bigger than the size of Manhattan or a, a large city but still containing the same amount of, of mass that 
a regular full-size star would have. It's just been highly compressed. Now there is a limit, I forget the name of it, but it's to where it, a, uh, a star can't collapse any more than uh, a certain limit. I can't forget the name of it, I'll have to look it up and put it in the next video. Uh, but yeah, neutrons. Now this is actually not. Uh, there's two types of neutron stars. There's a pulsar, which is kind of like what this is. It's a, uh, a rapidly spinning neutron star with jets of energy shooting out of the poles. Pulse, like kind of like a lighthouse. That's kind of why this is named Jackson's Lighthouse. And if the pulses are aimed at you aimed at us, you can actually see, they'll actually pulse like a lighthouse would. And uh, there's one in the Crab Nebula, and it's actually aimed at us, and you can see it. I mean, I can't see it, but you can detect its signal. Um, now, the other type of neutron star is what's called a magnetar, and those are highly magnetic. Um, there's when they died, when the star went supernova, they were they were spinning so fast that the magnetism got increased to the point of it being incredibly magnetic. The, the magnetic field is like if you were if there was a magnetar the same distance from us to our sun, it would wipe the credit, it'd wipe your credit cards, and if you were any closer than that, it would pull the iron out of your blood. It's it's incredible how much magnetism there is in these stars. Now neutron stars you can also uh, um, get speed boosts off of too. And it's a bit easier because their, their gravity fields aren't as wild so you can get closer to them without crashing into them. Turn my fuel scoop back on here. And these actually provide a huge speed boost. It's like 300% whereas white dwarfs are only about 50% so you can get incredible distances with these and uh, let me sw swing back around here I'll show you what that looks like come on this end. There we go. There it is. See this little tiny star. These things are very tiny. Extremely tiny. There we go. Are supercharged. Let me get out of the uh, star's effects here. Slow down. Go to ship. Let's see now. See, I'm at 233 light years of jump range for a single jump. That's almost here. That's. Oh, I can make the distance out to the Pleiades Nebula with that, which is our next destination. For the third type of star that can end its life, the dreaded black hole. Now, as soon as I find the right star system, we will be going here. There we go. The main sequence star is a blue is a B type star, but it also contains a black hole, which we will be going. And that will be our next destination. So I will put a cut in here and we will get that. Yeah, now I'm getting my speed boost. See, we're almost halfway there. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. All right. See you guys soon.
Alright, here we are. We've arrived in the system HR1185 out in the Pleiades Nebula. This is the closest star system to our solar system to have a black hole in it. There are no black holes in the bubble. It's inhabited space. This, uh, this black hole is 2.9 solar masses, 2.0 times the mass of our sun. But compressed down to a tiny, 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 minuscule size. Uh, unfortunately, I will say that the black holes in the game are not rendered very well. I hope they will improve the effects, but I'll still show you what they look like. As normally in real in the real world, you would be able to see there'd be uh, like you can't see gravitational lensing in the game, but the uh, the effects of the dense gravity just having a lensing effect to where it, like distorts this area around it. But you would also be able to see an accretion disk if a star if the black hole was pulling in matter from around it, and it'd be superheated almost it'd be traveling at the what, is, what a tenth of the speed of light I think is what it is that's why it gets super hot and it glows that's why you can see a black hole that's what makes a black hole visible otherwise you wouldn't see anything which uh, yeah I hope they improve the effects of the black holes eventually they give them a better graphical effect but I'll still travel out and show you what this one looks like Uh, black holes are formed when uh, a star greater than 3.2 solar masses, that's 3.2 times the mass of our sun, goes supernova. And uh, the star, at that point, a, a heavy, heavy star has uh, lost the battle against gravity and uh, has gone supernova and uh, collapsed in on itself to the point where nothing can escape it. Not even light can escape it. The gravity is so dense. And, uh, yeah. Of course, there is the common misconception that if a black hole does, that it just automatically sucks everything into it, which is not true. It has to pass beyond the event horizon, which is the point of no return. If you pass that, then you're doomed. But, Black holes do have stable planets orbiting around them and stars orbiting around them at safe distances and they will continue to orbit around them until the black hole eventually a black hole will eventually evaporate if it has nothing left to feed on and uh, will disappear then the planets whatever orbiting around it will uh, be lost or just wander off I guess um, yeah there's not really much to say black hole, about black holes. We don't know much about them. Black holes are still largely a mystery because we can't see inside them for obvious reasons. Let's see if we go to the outside view. You can kind of see the uh, the lensing effect on the background space there. Very brief, very, it's very faint. But that is really all there is to see. You can't really, like, like I said, black holes aren't really rendered very well in the game. Unfortunately, it'd be kind of cool to see the accretion disks and the matter spinning around it and stuff. You notice my speed is already dropping off because I'm entering a gravity well. Black holes have an extreme gravity well. Now as we approach this black hole, you will see what I'm talking about. And that there's nothing to be seen. It's not pulling in stellar dust or 
commentary debris or anything. It's, it's just there. It's a blank spot. Now if you get close enough, you can see the lensing effect more clearly, but it doesn't... There's no... Uh, like what you see in the movies where you see the, the superheated disk of matter being spun around it. It doesn't show that. And there's another system in the game where there is a black hole next to a star, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't show it. Now, if a black hole was that close to a star, it'd be ripping matter off of that star, pulling it into it. It doesn't. It's not rendered in the game, unfortunately. Because it, I wish it was to be not only cool but more realistic. Now, uh, uh, another thing is that in the game, black holes are no risk to you or your ship. Now, the larger black holes will put off uh, radiation and heat that will heat up your ship and cause heat damage if you get too close, but there's no danger of you being sucked in or anything. Which is kind of cool, kind of good thing, I guess. When I first started playing this game, it really worried me about coming across black holes. I was like, "Oh, am I gonna get sucked in?" But yeah, no, there's no danger. And uh, theoretically, even at this distance from a tiny black hole, I should be safe in real life if I was really out here. It's just once you cross the event horizon is when uh, things start going downhill very quickly. Actually it's not even very quickly. For uh, The theory is that if you were to fall into a black hole and survive, because there would be no point, there would be no, no surviving falling into a black hole, but if you were to, able to survive somehow, um, for anybody looking in and seeing you fall in, you would just appear to stop, because time just stops in a black hole. It's uh, But for you, the time would be moving very quickly as you're approaching the speed of light. But for anybody looking in, time ceases. Oh, they did change the effect. Did they? No, it's a ship. Never mind. Why is there a ship near the black hole for? That's a little weird. Yeah, anyway, so there, there's your, there's a black hole. With two ships near it, for some reason. I haven't figured out that one yet. But yeah, that's... That is really weird. You can see the lensing effect as I move by of the black hole. But yeah, that's really weird. Why is there two ships there? That's really confusing. Now, for that, that is the end of that. We've covered all three main sequence star or non sequence stars. Sorry. For now, and now, we'll be heading back to port. There is a port ship in the nearby in, in this system. I'll be flying back to that. which I will cut back to.
we are. We are coming into orbit of a high mass world with uh, rings around it. I have landed on this world before. It's about 1.4. No. Is it? Yeah, I believe it's about 1.4 G's. Actually, it might be 4 G's. I think it's 4 G's. Anyway, we're coming around in this uh, port here or orbiting the planet. It's known as it's the Indra, as you can see in the title. This is a mega ship. You will soon see what a mega ship looks like. It's one of the, I guess it's a mobile docking port. It's a ship you can just dock at. It was launched out here for the uh, anti-Thargoid effort, which the Thargoids will be covered in a future episode, as will the Guardians. Um, I'm not sure when exactly. I'll have to find out how the best way to go about that, because the Thargoids are not exactly friendly currently. And the Guardians, I might do those first. I don't know yet. We'll see how that goes. Um, yeah. So as we are coming into port here. Alrighty, here we are. Launching into port. Oh, there's a battle going on there. That's nice. Ugh. I'm going too fast. I went too fast. Okay. Uh, slowly touch down here. Oh, hey, how about that? Alright. Uh. We are coming to the end of this episode. I hope you all liked this. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Any comments, suggestions, or otherwise, leave them in the comments. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care.